How's it going everyone? Ryan F MTG. The last video we talked about all the red cards from ADA and you know what? Let's just jump right into it and talk about all the green cards starting off with Golden Tempest Rajan. This is 7 MP 2 8 with combo. When HP becomes 4 or less it turns into Raging Golden Lion Rajan and let's see what that is. That is a 9 MP unit. Well you're not casting it. For 310 with Heavy Pierce and combo. Overall I like this card a lot because guess what? If the opponent's way to deal with this is just with unit attacking, well then this kind of has a reset and it turns into a bigger, beefier ape beast. And I like that a lot. Yes, this does die to like hard removal, but it's 7 MP, 7 MP dodges, you know, Fate of the Unworthy or Dark Destruction. And it dodges a lot of things, but not like Living Death and stuff like that. So yes, yeah, sometimes you will play 7 MP to a with combo and you don't get to flip it. But when you get to flip this, this is just a, a threat with recursion and just a lot of stats and then it has combo and then it gets oh heavy piercing combo just kind of gets bigger beefier and better and i'm all in for golden tempest time to check in what x is doing sometimes he's doing really good sometimes he's not doing so good so how's he doing in ada 6 mp for a 3 5 with anti-air mm, all that's not that great however it says when played randomly distribute a total of six or sorry seven points between friendly units hp and your hero's life when HP is 12 or greater for the first time, gain plus two attack. This is an interesting one. Because it's 6 MP for a 3-5, and then distribute seven points. That's a lot. Seven points is a lot. So if this soaks up a couple of them, then it's like a 3-6 or a 3-7 or a 3-10. Man, if this gets what? To 12? It gets plus two, so it's five? That feels really, really good. My thing is, will this help life gain strategies? Because there was a life gain strategy that was good, not great, that liked to, you know, gain life and give your your units HP buffs. I don't know, X could kind of push that to make that better. So I'm excited to see what X has in store. Hopefully it's not just like, oh yeah, this is not that good. Chun-Li is 4 MP for 2-4 with shield, while on the field, other friendly green units gain plus one attack. I like that, it's just all green units, right? It's not humans, it's it's no tribes, it's just green units. Overall, I think this card is good, not great, and I'm not sure if this will really find a home. 4 MP for a 2 4 with shield is fine. However, you know, sometimes we see like Herons where every single time you play a human, it gets another shield, another shield. That's what I want. The plus one attack is good but it doesn't give it to herself. So this is just giving at most two plus one attack. And plus one attack is nice and stuff, but I don't know. I I don't think this is a bad card. I just don't envision myself playing this or this really finding a home. Nero is three MP for a two four with growth five. And I want to reiterate that growth five. Uh, level two, gain plus two HP in combo. That's, a, that's great. Level three, gain plus two plus three. That's great. All that is such a great package for a three MP play. However, it's growth five. Growth five, there's a big difference between growth three that we see a lot of times in like, especially like red growth units and some green growth units, obviously, and growth five. You know, that's one of the reasons why I think growth has been getting better and better because we see more growth three than in comparison to when growth first came around with the Devil's Awakened, it was a lot of growth five. And I don't know. If there's a growth five deck going around, then yes, Nero is going to be good. However, Nero doesn't help other Neros flip. You have to play like, yo, know, a three MP unit and a three MP unit, and that's a little rough. And especially with growth five, it's hard to flow your board or flood your board with growth five units because you can only play two, right? Five and then five. You can't go like the Amaterasu special three, three, three. So I don't know. This is okay. However, Let's look at Eva. It is 4 MP for 2 5. When played, all friendly units with growth gain plus 2 growth points. Okay. That all friendly human units with growth gain plus 1 attack. So, if you play Nero and then Eva, Eva, Eva will flip it because it would be 4, then plus 2, that is 6. So then you only need to play another 4 MP unit to get all the growth and it gets plus one attack. So if there's more things like that, that could be good, but that's a lot of and and also and also. It just kind of seems like you're going to be fighting with the wind to try to stack these cards on top of each other. Maybe it's just not worth it. So I don't know, I'm kind of, kind of skeptical. There's a lot of power, but five is a big call, but 
there are things that you, maybe you just use this with like Nero's growth hero art and stuff like that, that just like, you know, automatically levels it up. And that could be really, really good. Chris pushing, what, a boulder? With a very, very yellow filter over it. 4 MP, 3, 5. When a friendly human unit is placed on the field, give that unit plus 2 HP. 4 MP for a 3, 5, like, that's actually pretty darn good stats. Plus 2 HP is nice, but it has to be with other human units. And I don't know. Like, I just think of, like, Karen in this slot, and I like Karen a whole lot more. So... I don't know, maybe this is just a cutoff. I don't think this is a bad card. I just don't see playing it. Maybe though, may maybe this will be surprising to me that people will play this more and it's just more impactful, but I just don't really see this being that impactful. Fila and just throwing boulders left and right, dude. 5 MP for 1-8 with MP boost of 20. After taking damage and surviving, give one other random friendly unit plus one attack. People are talking about this card. 5 MP, okay, for 1-8. 8 HP is a lot, so that means this will deal, get damage and then survive hopefully quite a long time. MP2 boost only 20 for 5 MP is not that good. That's usually what we see on 3 MP units. However, the plus one attack every single time this gets hit is a lot of note. It is other random friendly unit, so this cannot pump himself. I think there's a lot of brewing potential for this card. And this card has me interested and I think is good. It's just what home does this fit best in? This big monster, dude. 9 MP for 4-9. 9 MP is a lot. That is a lot. 4-9, that's a lot of stats, but I want more from 9 MP. It has spillover. Okay, so put this in the middle lane. Just have this be crashing face left and right. Seems cool. Death deal 5 damage to all units without flight. So basically this is just like a big like earthquake effect when this dies and stuff. I love the flavor. I just don't think I'm ever going to play this card. 9 MP is so much. Yes, it is doing stuff. However, 9 MP is just so much where there's a lot of really good 5 and 6 MP plays that maybe don't do as much. In some cases they might do more. I just don't see myself playing this. And also it deals damage to all of your units as well. And yeah, you can maybe play around that and not play units, but I don't know. 9 MP I think is just... Too big of a pill for me to swallow. Nico doing some sort of pointing or other. 5 MP for a 2 9, growth 5, uh, give all friendly units plus 1 plus 1. I like that Nico plays well with other Nikos, right? You could play a Nico, then play another Nico, and give all friendly units plus 1 plus 1. So then it's, you know, that Nico is now a 3 9, this is a 3 9, you play another one. This has a pretty good domino effect. It is the same thing that I was talking about in Nero, that growth 5 is a little bit hard to really get that domino effect going. But 5 MP for a 2-9, that's a lot, a lot of HP. And I like that this pumps up itself and your whole board. So if there is a 5 MP growth dot deck, or really just a full on growth, you know, playing all the actions that growth your cards and stuff like that, I could see Nico being played in there. Iris, 3 MP for 1-8 machine. When played, if another friendly machine unit is on the field, gain plus one attack. So you are never playing this card if you're not playing other machines because a 3 MP for 1-8, you're not playing. However, if a machine-centric deck does exist, 3 MP for 2-8? That also, if you're playing like the rushes and stuff like that, this could get agility, stuff like that. That could be really nice because 8 HP is so much and 3 MP is so little. So caveat, if machines are a thing, this could be a good, good early play. Well, I guess this is not really your first play. It's a good like curve filler, very low end curve filler at that. Look at this cute little dude, just handy presents out left and right. 3 MP for a 2-2. Two -two. When play, give one random monster unit in your hand or EX pocket plus one plus three. So this is a glorified pump action on a unit because 3 MP for a 2-2, two -two, you would never play that. However, plus 1 plus 3 is a lot when you are getting a 2-2 two -two body attached to it. However, you have to be playing monsters. Monsters haven't really been a thing. If they're a thing, kind of like what I would say with machines, you could see this play because it is very low cost and you're getting, you know, what? three five worth of stats that's kind of nice and hopefully the monster that this is giving plus one plus three is you know a heavy hitter with you know agility or spillover or something like that but if monsters aren't really a theme then you're never going to see this played robert five mp for a three three when played give all friendly human units plus one attack death give all friendly human units plus one attack i don't know so this is a five mp 4-3, because this will attack pump itself, and then when it dies, it also gives plus one attack. 
That is a lot. But this is 5 MP. I'm not quite sure if it's worth that 5 MP when there's a lot of really good 5 MP cards. And just having 3 HP is a little bit weak. I would like... Because this will get killed in like one attack, which maybe you just want this to get killed so that it pumps up your other units, but your other units at most are just two. So I don't really see playing Robert. Able, four MP for a four, four. I'm feeling a lot of Street Fighter four vibes up in here. Victory, give plus two life to your hero. Victory triggers, I'm always a little down on because some victory triggers are really, really good but it's a very hard trigger to make sure that you're triggering because it has to eat something and survive. I don't see ever seeing playing able because 4 MP for a 4 4 is fine. However, what, you want this dude to have victory and then it's victory is just gain two life? I don't even, I don't even see this being played in a life gain strategy and that's the strategy that I would most want able. Time to talk about some green actions. First up is stimulating supper, 3 MP, give one unit death, gain plus 2 MP, and make it a 2-2. This is one of the cards that was uh, uh, revealed, you know, one of the, in their spoiler season, the reveal season, and it had a lot of people talking. This card is extremely good, because also is give one unit, be your unit, be the opponent's unit, it could be 80 theme. So this is a pseudo, yes, it's not a straight up removal spell, it's a complete debuff. Or you can play it on something that yours if you really want the plus 2 MP, right? However, I think more times than not, you're going to be playing it on your opponent's units. And of note, this doesn't seal the card. So if you do a, a Rochi, it will still have the Rochi effects. It's just now a 2-2. Two -two. And then when it dies, they get plus 2 MP. However, if they play a Rochi and you play Supper, I'm feeling really, really good about that trade. I think this card is fantastic. It really, really helps green power level across the board because you can just play this in any green deck if you want to right this is not a build around this is just a raw powerful card phantom beast slayer 2 mp select one friendly unit deal damage to the enemy unit in front equal to the selected units mp if the enemy unit is destroyed by this damage the selected friendly unit gains plus one plus two so of note it's 2 mp so that is very very cheap of note, though, it's dealing damage based on its MP, which maybe is good because if maybe this was HP or attack, this could be so, so much. So I think this really depends on what type of deck you're playing. If you're only playing three and four MP units, maybe this isn't that good. However, two MP for the three, three or four damage could be fine. But if you're playing some five, six, seven MP units, then this gets really, really juicy. And then if you kill it, it gets plus one plus two your unit gets plus one plus two so it's a pump spell the more i talk about this the more excited i am even if here's the thing even if you deal two damage and it doesn't kill it it's still or sorry three damage because basically the the lowest more times than not you can do is three damage and it doesn't kill the unit well it's still two mp for three damage and you know exactly where that three damage is going and that's probably something that you want to play and then like dream case scenario you're playing like a six drop so it's two mp deal six and then your unit gets plus one plus two i'm in on this card i think this card is fantastic mission or machination four mp and flick seal on one friendly green unit give that unit plus two plus two heavy pierce and spill over that's a lot of stuff so basically you're saying like shh you're 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 just a base level vanilla whatever x whatever x unit you are however now you're getting plus two plus two heavy pierce and spillover that's a lot of stuff a lot of stuff actually but it costs four mp i don't see playing this card ever for four mp maybe it's a one of or something like that because this card has a big downside but it has a big upside but it's 4 MP, so overall kind of off this card. Suspicious request, 2 MP, give 2 HP to a friendly unit. If a friendly unit on the field has reached maximum growth, give an additional plus one, plus one, and shield. So this is obviously only for growth-centric decks, because if you're not playing a growth-centric deck, this is not worth it. But if you are playing a growth deck, this could be worth it, because then it, what, is a plus one, plus three in shield? That seems pretty good. However, push comes to shove. How much better even is that than like blade shattering defense that just asks you to play a couple action cards? Eh, doesn't seem that much better. Manipulated justice, four MP, give one friendly unit shield. 
okay, well, we have a lot of ways to give one unit shield for one or two MP, and this is four MP. So why am I playing, you know, three or two more MP? Then give all friendly units with shield plus two attack. Okay, plus two attack is a lot. If all of your units have shield and this is plus six attack, that's so much. However, let's say worst case scenario, the only thing with shield is the one thing that you just shielded. This is shield plus and plus two attack for four MP. <sighs> that seems like a heavy cost. I wish this cost, this card cost maybe like three MP because I don't know, even in a shield centric deck, I feel like it's very hard for you ever to really get all of your units with shield, play this card and not have them fade to the unworthy or destroy one of your units. So a lot of times I don't think you're ever really going to get that three plus two attack dream that you want to live with this card. And four MP just seems a little bit too high for me to want to play this card. Tragic outcome, two MP, return one friendly green unit to your deck, then give all units in your hand and EX pocket plus two HP. It's all, all of your units. That's a lot of HP just for two MP. And yes, you are bouncing that unit to your deck, so not to your EX pocket. However, like let's say it's a feline that's about to die, you do tragic outcome, and then that little feline's throwing around a lot of HP, which can go a long way. So I don't know, tragic outcome, it has that magic 2 MP cost that always makes me a little bit more intrigued with cards. It's that thief. 3 MP, return one friendly monster unit to the EX pocket and reduce its MP by half. Yet again, if monster units are, or monster decks are a theme, then maybe you'll play that because it is kind of nice to reset it and you are reduce it by half rounded up, which is a big thing because then like if it's a 6 MP unit, well then your it's that thief is kind of for free. However, are monster things going monster decks going to be a thing? I'm skeptical, but if they are, then you'll play some It's That Thief. Well laid trap, 3 MP, inflict seal on one enemy unit, and that unit cannot counter. So this is very much similar to disarm with the extra benefit that that unit cannot counter, but with the big downside that this costs three compared to two. Overall, I'm going to be playing Disarm. I think that 2 MP costs, it's free and active response phase, and that's why there's a big difference between 2 and 3 MP in my mind. Yes, the cannot counter is very good, and maybe, you know what, right now I will be saying maybe I'm underestimating that, especially on like a big beefier unit. It helps to kill that unit that it cannot counter. So, I don't know, I, the more I talk about that and the more times I think that the cannot counter ability could be worth a one MP extra, cause that's basically what you're paying. Yo, know, inflict seal on one enemy unit is two MP. The cannot counter is one MP. Do you play that for one MP? And maybe you do, maybe it's a split. Maybe it's like, if you wanna play like three disarms, maybe it's like two disarms and a one well lay trap. I don't know, or is this gonna be like an ivory trap teamwork where you only play ivory trap teamwork as a one of every once in a while? First aid spray, 3 MP, give plus 5 HP to one friendly unit or plus 5 life to your hero. My big question is about templating here and how this card actually works. Do you get to pick or is it random, right? Like, do you play this card and does it say like, oh, pick HP to HP or life or is it just like, yeah, flip a coin? Because if you flip a coin, it goes down. However, if you get to choose, it kind of goes up because, well, the more choices you have, the better things you usually get. I don't know. This card seems fine, but it's 3 MP, and I keep saying that. Even in like a life gain strategy, there's a lot of life gain cards that are 1 and 2 MP that we already can play with. So even, let's say you get to pick, I think this card is okay, but I don't know how much you're going to be playing this. If you don't get to pick it, I don't think you're playing this. Even though three MP for five HP or five life is a little bit, well, no, you have like sibling memories. Or I'm off first aid spray, goodbye. Tragic Rampage, two MP, give one friendly machine unit, plus one, plus one and shield. So yet again, you're only playing this in a machine dot deck and our machine's going to be a thing. I kind of have my hesitations, but we are seeing some good build around cards. However, plus one, plus one and shield is good. But is it that much better than Blade Shire and Defense? And I are, I know I keep saying, is it that much better? But yet again, rotation is not happening until May. So this is something, this is the world that's happened that we live in is I'm going to critique all these things harder and harder and harder. And yes, this gets plus one attack where Blade Shire and Defense doesn't. Blade Shire and Defense gives a whole lot more HP. So overall, 
push comes to shove, I think I like Blaze Iron Defense more than Tragic Rampage, even in a machine deck. Summoning Tool. 2 MP, add a unit card with an MP cost of 4 or less in your deck to the EX pocket. If that card has growth, give it plus 3 HP. So this is very similar to Bombast, but Bombast I think is just better because Bombast can be 5 MP or less and it reduces MP. And overall, I like that it gives you something that can cost 5 MP because you can get like Chun Li's and Karen's. And I like the uh, MP reduction over the growth centric plus 3 HP. So I'm kind of off summoning tool when I can still just play Bombast. Last is spray 2 MP, give one friendly unit, gain plus 2 HP every five seconds, maximum of three times. So this is at most plus 6 HP. This seems really good with maybe like charge shot that, you know, it's, you know, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, but we have like the auto heal card that doesn't have a maximum of three times. So yet again, I'm just going to say there's other cards that I would rather be playing with this. And now that we're done with green, overall, I don't know. Green Green definitely got some really, really powerful cards, especially looking at the legendaries. Some okay cards and a lot of cards that are just like, I feel like we have purely better versions still in standard. And I know I said this in the red one, I'll kind of reiterate really fast, is that standard is so long. That is why we need a rotation now because so many times I'm just like, well, we have a better version. Blade Shiron Defense is still there. So I'm going to be playing Blade Shiron Defense. Now, maybe come May where some of these cards rotate out, that's maybe when these cards will see play. But right now, green, I don't know, green got some really, really juicy ones. So I think green got some love, but a lot of just the filler is completely that and filler. I'm never going to be playing these cards. But that's enough about green. Next, we'll be talking about purple. And purple is the new hero, has some new, like, well, build around stuff. So that should be hopefully exciting to look through all the purple cards.